Hey, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Gamer Guide, and this time we're going to be playing something different. Scrap Mechanic, brand new game that has just been released on Steam as of today. So I'm just getting off uh, work. I thought I'd sit down and uh, try this out, but we'll start here by just getting the settings right so it looks as good as it can look here on my computer. And uh, I figured we'd just kind of give it a first impression and try to build something basic. Taking the liberty to check out some of the instructions and uh, look at a couple tutorial videos off camera, so this would be a little bit more entertaining. And I'll probably chop this up a little bit too, so uh, then it'll put you through all the boredom of just kind of trying to figure out exactly what the hell I'm doing. So the first thing we need to do is find a place to build here, and I am kind of appreciating how beautiful this is compared to games like Robocraft. I'm so used to being on Mars or somewhere with just rocky terrain or icicles everywhere, so this is kind of a, a pretty game at least. Uh, now, right now, it's just in the beginning development stages, really. I probably bought this prematurely, as I noticed when I got into the game. The only thing available is creative mode, which is fine, because I enjoy building robots. Uh, but we basically just have this testing ground here, and uh, we do have things like weapons, and I saw other little knickknacks in the inventory, like things to eat and stuff, but there's not really a game based around that yet. We also have giant cornfields and stuff, which I have no idea what it's for. And I can't even smack it with a hammer, so, you know, what good is it? So anyway, I found a good area here to uh, put together my first vehicle. And I'm thinking about just putting together uh, something real simple. Not too many tricky components or anything like that. I'm just kind of a newbie here. Uh, got the lift here, and it looks like pressing up and down on the keyboard gets that going. So let's start here on top of this hill as we got a little bit uh, more room to build something a little bigger. I'd like to kind of build a big wheel bot as my first uh, my first vehicle, or whatever you want to call it, my first contraption here in Scrap Mechanic. Um, and look at all the parts we got here. We even have things like plants. All right, so now what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and put down some of these structural frames that I uh, saw in here, and I figure since we're trying to make something big, uh, we'll go ahead and try to lay these flat. And it looks like by pressing uh, Q or W on my keyboard, I'm able to I kind of rotate things. So just hitting Q over and over will get the uh, placement right eventually if you just keep hitting it. I also like the look of these metal blocks, so I'm going to go ahead and try those out here in this. And we'll just put together like a four square pattern here. I want it to be kind of light because I don't know if the uh, weight of the blocks affects how fast it moves yet. So I'm just uh, going to play it safe. I'm going to put a couple of these lighter frame bronze blocks in there and then just kind of bind everything together here with these metal cubes, which I think looks pretty cool compared to some of the other things I've seen. They are a little heavier, but that's okay. I'm kind of going for like a tanky build for my first uh, scrap mechanic build, especially since I don't really uh, have a very good working knowledge of how all the other little electronic parts work yet. So I figure if we just kind of get something that runs this first episode, maybe make it look cool. Uh, later on we can work on doing more of the tricks and the uh, trap doors and all that kind of stuff. I'll have to probably watch a couple uh, tutorials or just mess around a little bit with it when I have a little more time uh, outside here of work and uh, YouTube videos. So here we go, I got my basic frame down and uh, now I figured let's try out these shocks. This seems like a good idea. Oh, that's the wrong placement. I'll pull that dude off there. You just uh, hold down your other button and it seems to pull things off. So these are the sports shocks. There's a couple different ones. I'm not really sure how these will perform, but uh, my truck has sports shocks. So I figure, hey, why not try the sports shocks as uh, it works pretty good on my truck. So I'm thinking adding a couple different wheels. And I'm also realizing here that I have no way to turn this vehicle, so I'm gonna have to redesign a little bit. I'm gonna go and pull these up, and I put uh, these bearings on top, and I figure that I can attach a block to the top like this, and that will allow my vehicle to turn. Um, but that means I'm gonna have to probably pull my frame up on the front side at least, so there's gonna be a little redesigning here in the future. So I'm gonna just snap these off and then I'll be right back after I have uh, gone back in and kind of readjusted the bottom frame. All right, well, here we go. I think uh, by running these steel blocks on the second level, this would be the easiest way to kind of pop it up. It took me a second to figure out exactly how I was gonna get this done. But I do like the kind of four square bottom frame. Oh, what happened there? Block explosion. Not sure what the command was, but uh, whatever I did there, 
gave me like that stack of solid blocks, which is pretty cool. Not quite sure I pulled that off. There we go. That one's loose. There we go. Just stick it back on there solidly. I also saw there's some things like bolts and things too. I wonder if you can like stick those in the metal frame and make them look even neater. Oh, that's cool. So you can just hold down and drag your mouse and uh, that will give you the ability to place down more than one block. So that's really nice. I wish they had that in other games like Robocraft or Scraps or uh, even uh, Reassembly. But I guess every game has got its perks, you know. Here we go. You can turn it by pressing uh, W and then just uh, hold down the trigger and pull it all the way across. All right, so now I've uh, lifted the frame up a little bit. I've attached the front wheels to uh, the drive motor, and uh, that should work now as far as turning. So I think we've got to go ahead and put our deck on the top of this uh, frame. I'll probably just go ahead and stick with the uh, heavy steel. Now let's try doing this here, see how much we can spread it. Mm, okay. There we go. If so I can come all the way to the end. You can go uh, 3D with this too, this is really nice. So we'll just cover this, coat the entire top here. And I hope this isn't going to be too heavy to drive. I haven't tried it out off camera or anything like that, so this is kind of my first attempt here at uh, getting this right. So, of course, no experience too, and I'm sure as uh, we go on, I'll be building bigger, cooler, more interesting things. Uh, but so far, uh, I think we, we got a good start here on top of our little mound hill of uh, building things. Okay, and uh, let's see, if we come back here to uh, the back, we can probably do the same thing on the next level down, is what I'm thinking. Now the back wheels aren't going to turn, and I think even though they're spaced out a little bit, we're still going to be able to maneuver pretty well. But we'll see, I haven't really played with the mechanics on this, but I'm, as long as the physics aren't too crazy, uh, we should be fine. So we got all this filled over now. I guess I can't stand right on it if I want to place these blocks. So we'll throw that down. And uh, let's see, we got one right back here. Pull that in. Alright, so I guess the next step now is uh, let's get our driving components on. We have our wheels and we have our ability to turn. And we've got to figure out what the heck to do here. So we need a, a driver's seat. Let's put it like center mass here up in the front. Uh, front side. We can move it around too later if we need to. And then this is a pretty big video vehicle, so I'm thinking uh, maybe we use a couple engines. We've got these gas engines. I'm not sure if these are more powerful or less powerful than electric, but uh, I figure we'll try it out. All right, let's turn up the gas engine a little bit. I don't want to go all the way to the top, but I'm going to bring it like two pegs down because I'm sure this thing will fly wildly if you uh, give it full power. So here we go. We have two engines after all. So we're powering the back four wheels and the front four wheels separately. So I've got them both on the same mark. Now I just got to figure out how to get this all working together. Now one thing I realized here is that uh, I've got to put bearings on my wheels to get them to turn. I thought the wheels would already have bearings in them, but that's not the case. So to get your wheels to turn, you got to stick them on a bearing peg. That's something I didn't know right away. So here we go. Let me come back up here. Now, um, the other thing we need to do is use our connection tool to connect our, uh, our motors to our working parts. So I think that's what provides power. So we're just going to use, let's just press E, and I think by uh, running the motor over it's going to give you uh, power of movement or whatever to these parts. So we'll try with the wheels here. Um, I think I got a power the turning too, so I, I did a couple to the front. And then I connected the chair to the motor, thinking that the, that will kind of let us uh, start and stop our vehicle. So we'll see if that works out. Um, so right now we're just rear wheel drive. Everything's all separate, so I'm thinking about maybe making all the back wheels off the back motor. And then maybe all the front wheels off the front motor. Let's see how that works. Bring this up. Okay, so we can only have, it looks like, five connection points off of each of these gas motors. So I have four on the back, so let's see, this is going to be a problem now if I'm trying to power the turning too. So let's go ahead and run these two up to the front. 
next time we'll see how this works. I could be doing this totally wrong. Like I said, this is my first uh, time playing Scrap Mechanic, but uh, that's why we're doing this. We're going to learn a little bit in this episode about uh, how to build that proper vehicle here. All right, so let's get started. Let's see what we got. I'm not sure if we can connect these uh, the steering wheel or the steering motor or whatever to uh, the front wheels, but it seems like that would be important. I can't just have it connected only to the engines. Otherwise, I have no steering, I think. But we'll see. I could be wrong. I probably should just give this a uh, test run here in a second. Okay, let's see. There's some way to connect this here to the front wheels. But it seems like it's not connecting... Um, can't connect to that. So maybe you can only have one connection per point. Like, you can't have a green and a red connection. Uh, let's pull this out. Looks like we have to anyway to be able to use it. And uh, let's take our first test drive here and see what we've created. And then, then we'll improve if we need to. Okay. Well, it seems I have created the uh, first crappy lawnmower in the game of uh, Scrap Mechanic. It's basically just to create wrecks in old ladies' yards. I'm rip the plants out to get my bare tires. Yeah. <laughs> And do it in magnificent fashion. I noticed it seems pretty stable. So, if anything can be said, at least that's good. But, uh, yeah, basically, this is the, uh, wreck, the wreck creator. <laughs> its sole intention is to rip up your yard. So, while I'm using it, uh, I don't think it's a little bit of a And it seems maybe powering the spring bearing, but it's not the right thing. Maybe we disconnect our motor from our bearings. So let's see here. We do need to probably power all our wheels for sure to get them rolling the right direction. And let's see it here. Can we bring this guy up there? No. Okay. Looks like I'll probably have to disconnect the uh, turning access point before I'm able to connect that from the front motor. Okay. Let's see what else we can do here too. We probably got to get this back on the lift somehow. Okay, it looks like I have the car on the lift. Ah, nice. So you can just grab it with the lift and then place it wherever you want to. I didn't know that. Well, that's cool. We'll go back up on our hill here and uh, be able to start working on this thing again. Hopefully turn our rut machine into something reasonable. Okay, so here we go. Let's move our steering wheel now to the front turning bearings. I'm hoping that they have power, even though we're just connecting with the steering wheel. Okay, I yeah, can't do that, I guess, because the red thing's already there. Um, okay, so we got to take this guy and move it here to the wheel. Yeah, that worked. And then, uh, let's see, we'll grab this and bring it down here to the front right side. Okay, now we should have something that hopefully is operational. Okay, both sides are connected. All the wheels are connected to a motor. And uh, let's give it another try here and see see how we do. Because we got to pull this dude out again. There we go. And jump on. All right, well, now our vehicle is, like, stuck in the mountain. So I can't get anywhere here. I'm stuck in a bog now. I've created too deep of a rut to get out of. All right, let's get our lift back out and uh, get ourselves pumped back up. Maybe we move down here off the mountain now. I'm not sure if that little hill is creating a problem or what, but let's just bring it down onto a level surface. All right, problem solved, and uh, let's see how we do. We got a little bit of time to jump in the seat, and damn, what's going on with my arms there? Look at that. I'm ripping my arms out of the socket. I'm Gumby Man. Look at me rolling a circle. Well, I was trying to go forward, but I'm rolling a circle. I think we got a problem with our wheels. So when you're uh, using your connection tool, I notice you can switch your wheel direction. So you got to make sure that uh, your wheel direction is the same way. You basically you're just going to right click on it and it will switch it. So it looks like everything is rolling forward now. So let's let's give us one more test here. Hopefully we now have a working frame to to build something cool off of. All right, lift this up and we'll pull it out.
There we go. And now let's uh, let's see if this is finally gonna work. Third time's a charm, they say, right? Nice. Seems to be uh, steering correctly now. And uh, this thing is pretty damn fast. Wow. I didn't expect it to be this fast for such a big vehicle. But uh, also really st stable with the uh, eight wheels. Could have gone with the other wheels, but I think I like this a little bit better. And we are now killing all the uh, crops with our uh, wheeling machine. This thing would be a lot of fun to drive in real life. Of course, uh, with nothing protecting you, you'd also probably die. Man, this uh, climb still is really nice, too. Yep. And we almost died there. Okay, back up the other direction. Let's see if we can uh, launch ourselves off this cliff or something cool. Whoa, what's this? I feel like we found a cave or something. Let's drive down there and investigate. What did we just discover? At least it's interesting looking. So we smash ourselves into a rock. Oh, some kind of weird geometrical form. I bet you that's going to be something when uh, they expand the game to be more than just creative mode. Let's back up and uh, see if we can't improve our vehicle over here by this uh, cool rock formation. I'm not sure what it's supposed to be. Granite or something like that. Limestone. But anyway, it's a good backdrop, so we'll use that. But yeah, so we have a working contraption. Now we need to make this thing uh, look nice, too, instead of just being a giant rolling square with uh, two engines. But at least we know kind of the basics of getting a vehicle moving. It took a little bit of time, but hey, we did it. All right, so where can we place this dude? Um, there we go. Lift it up a little bit. Let's get back on top and uh, start making some improvements now to the whole chassis. All right, I figured, why not add some rocket engines? Make it go a little bit faster. Maybe you have some afterburners in case we want to pick up speed. we got enough room on the back. It's not like we don't have uh, the space for it on this huge frame. So let's see. We'll just do two on each side. I'm not sure how powerful these are. figured let's add a little detail to the front, too. And uh, I found these cool uh, staircase wedges that uh, make a nice little pattern coming up. So just by hitting Q, you can kind of get in positioned eventually the right way. And uh, we're making kind of a cool, I don't know, maybe a tank or a truck or something like that, or a combination of something. We'll see what, what happens here. I got kind of an idea of what I want to do. But uh, we'll start by kind of making the front side of the vehicle, and then I want to enclose the entire thing in, too, so we can have, like, a little shelter from uh, these supposed farmer robots that are going to be in the game later. Figured we'll add a couple of these I-beam uh, decorations. And I found some things for a front grill, too, to make it kind of look truck-like or something. But uh, let's see, that's a little off, so let's pop this off, and then we'll move this grill over one more spot. And uh, replace it. Figured we'd go ahead and add a couple uh, more I-beams here to the front, too, make it kind of look cool, and add a little more color, too. So these are uh, I-beam ends. They kind of close in the uh, sides, and I think it also makes our vehicle a little bit lighter. So we're just going to run these down the front. And I uh, figure we can probably build some stuff on top of here, too. So here's what I got so far. I've kind of uh, sloped it out a little bit, added a couple headlights, added some more of these I-beams for kind of decorations. We're kind of going for a gray and orange theme here. Down the side here, we're going to use some of these wedge blocks. And I think I'm going to build a, a canopy over the back, at least, kind of like a little home or area for uh, mechanics and all electronics and stuff to go in. So I like them turned. And uh, then here in the front too, we're going to go ahead and add some more beams. And I have an idea for windows, even though there's no glass in this game. Uh, I saw these metal windows, but you really can't see through them very good, so I think these eye beams uh, are going to work better. and add these all the way to the front. I guess they're just beams, they're not really the eye beams. But I like the way that looks. It lets you see through when you're in the vehicle. And uh, I think it looks kind of cool too. It matches the colors a little bit better as well. So we're going to run those all the way up the front. And then I think I'm going to replace these side uh, metal windows with some more eye beams. 
beams. They run them up, but the problem is they don't go all the way to the top, so I'm trying to figure out how to fill in the top part. Otherwise, it's kind of like a semi-enclosed cage. We'll pull this off, too. I don't, I don't really like it. They got the longer version of these beams, but they're a little bit too long. Like, they're five, and I don't want to go up um, another level. So, let's see. Could pull those off. Let's look at the other side here real quick. Now these guys are pretty wide and it looks like that this is about a six width so I could probably run these double down uh, the side and kind of instead of running them uh, vertically run them horizontally. So let's see how that looks. Pull that dude off there. Here we go. Put these all the way up the side and the other one to get them connected in the middle. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. It looks like we got a little center beam too going across. Makes it look a little bit more substantial. So I like that look. We'll go ahead and do that same thing on the other side. Here we go. And go all the way up the side. And then I also need to kind of figure out what I'm gonna do for the roof. See, it's looking pretty good though. I mean, it looks a little more sci-fi. See here, I finished the back now too. And I have a little open uh, doorway in the back I haven't completed with the door yet. All right, let's grab a couple more headlights and uh, we'll stick them up here in the front. Get this thing looking a little more solid. And then look what I found. I found some decorations. <laughs> I got a cool skull now. So this thing's called the skull sign, but uh, we'll stick it right on the front. Just to let people know it's hazardous to stand in front of this giant contraption. Also got a danger sign. Um, plants, do not enter, welcome. There's all kinds of cool little things they added in here. Here's one for beware of farm bots. I guess that's something that hasn't been released yet. Do not enter. I like, kind of like these signs. A stop sign. Be like a bus, have it on the back. Hey, here's something cool, a radio. We can put a radio on our truck. Every, every truck needs a radio, right? So, let's see here, put, our, uh, put a radio on our bug rover, or whatever we're gonna call this. Go, let's see, stick it uh, maybe right here in the center. Nice, let's see, press E to use. All right, now I found these uh, rail joins are really nice for uh, seizing blocks. Just gotta run them so the holes aren't visible, but they're also pretty light. So I'm using these to fill in all the little spots I have left open from our, uh, our uh, beams. And then I put a switch in here too. The switch I uh, connected up to the rear thrusters, as you see here. So that's on off to uh, get the afterburners going. And this fuse box is kind of cool too, it's just a decoration piece I found. So I think we're good, I got our steering wheel on left and right. Uh, fuse box doesn't seem like it actually does anything though. So here is uh, what our vehicle is looking like completed. I uh, threw some more blocks on the top there to kind of finish out the caged look on the front. And then the back is totally enclosed. Now one thing I like to do too on the back is uh, eventually add a door, but let's take this out for a test drive real fast and uh, see how it goes. We'll pull this off. Let's see, can we hit this with our hammer? Nope. Go ahead. Let's grab it by uh, right clicking. Whoa! <laughs> Crap! This thing's rolling by itself. What, what the heck? I did something wrong. Something's not connected right. It's coming back, so maybe I can grab it uh, with our jack. Damn it! I hope it stops somewhere, because I don't want to chase it across the map. Okay, there we go. Okay. Head back over here, see if we can snatch it real quick with our uh, lifter. There we go. Got it. Come back down here by our uh, wall of granite. Uh, see what we did wrong. I'm not sure. Something isn't connected right. So let's uh, let's jump up here real quick and do some improvements.
All right, while I'm thinking about it, let's look at the uh, door options. I didn't really want to get into anything too tricky, but uh, I think a door probably wouldn't be too hard, but we have a uh, two bearings, so I figured that's going to be the axis for the door. The problem is these um, I-beams, the short I-beams are square, and so is the back of the wall, so I really need something circular. But ideally, if they made like a circular I-beam uh, that doesn't touch the wall, then I could connect this controller to it. So I guess this I'll just do it in theory, and we'll worry about making a door probably in the next episode, as uh, this episode's going to be kind of long as it is. But uh, here, let's see, we got this connected to the bottom, and then we'll run one of these from the controller to the top. And then let's see, uh, got to figure out how to get into it. Here we go. Okay, so there's one and two, which one is the bottom and two is the top. And I was uh, under the understanding that each of these is like a sequence. So the first one here is going to be the first thing it does. It looks like by, oh, I see, by scrolling left and right, you're able to tell it by how much it should turn. So I want to do a 90 degree turn clockwise and then the other one a 90 degree turn clockwise I think to get them both to open the same way it might be counterclockwise because it's on the roof but uh, let's go out and take a look at it uh, the bottom one let's see okay if the blue would go that direction and the top one blues going the opposite way so it's not going to do anything so I need to switch one of these here um, let's see I think right clicking is going to do it there we go so just right-clicking on the uh, bearing switches directions. I guess it's the same, exactly the same thing as the wheel. So just right-click on it if uh, you need to go the opposite direction. All right, I threw a switch here on the bottom two, and it looks like you have to have the lift off to use it. But uh, like I said, it's not going to work. Anymore. All right, so let's see here. Um, I tried a second time, and it's kind of the same problem with the motor. So I. I think this is the problem. I think you gotta have the pilot seat attached, and just by listening to the sound of the motor die down, I think that's what the deal is. So, we should be good now. I got uh, my steering wheel connected to the motor and to the left and right turning. Let's go ahead and jump on here and uh, see if we are indeed ready to go. Yeah. There we go. This thing's faster than such a huge build. Here we go. So it's skating a little bit. It's almost like one of the wheels is stuck or something or going the wrong way. So I might have to tweak it a little bit, but it's driving pretty good. Let's see this back up here. Actually, one thing I want to do is I want to try this uh, with the thrusters too. So I need probably either pop out or I'm not sure exactly the easy way to turn it on. Let's see, we just pop out here and hit the button. Press the E. Now they should be going. It looks like I see, I see a little bit of thruster there, so I think they're going now. But the vehicle's not moving. I was kind of thinking this vehicle would move even if I wasn't driving. I was going a little bit when I got in the driver's seat. But I think it's really just going to help it move quicker. Than before. So dodge, dodge the rock. This thing has a little bit of drift to it. It's kind of fun. I tell you, it's a lot easier to drive than the uh, cruisers right now in Little Craft. This thing's even like an overhaul. Right now. So hopefully they're working on that. There we go. Turn the vehicle and uh, let's see how fast we can get across here. Now I don't have the engine all the way up, but uh, it seems to be pretty good movement speed. Let's go rip through this field here. Take out the corn, take out all the plants. Alright, let's see. <laughs> Look at this. The corn is coming through my vehicle. It's a strong corn. Or whatever this is. Yeah, I guess it's unsprouted corn. Let's find somewhere where we can uh, work on this vehicle a little bit more. Maybe I can add some more uh, decorations and uh, work on finishing up that door on the back too. There we go. There's a nice shady patch. Okay. So first uh, test drive is successful. This thing works nice. There we go and uh, we'll put it back on the lift. All right, so I looked at the wheels. I couldn't really find the one that seems to be going the wrong way. Um, so we might take it for another test drive here. I need to make sure everything's connected right to let it pull some wheels off. 
Well, unfortunately, I got uh, booted out with a bug, and when I got back in, I noticed uh, my vehicle is like permanently suspended up in the air without a lift attached to it, and I can't really get it to fall back down. I've tried to uh, turn the thrusters on and off, turn the wheel, uh, trying to attach the lift again, didn't work. And uh, pulling parts off and putting them back on, so can't really figure out how to get this thing to fall, but maybe you guys have run into this bug too. If you've been playing any scrap mechanic, you can leave me a uh, comment down below if you have a suggestion for it. I'd also love to get a name suggestion for my first little creation here. I thought about calling it like Bug Rover or something since we're bugged, or a, you know, it looks like a truck and a tank too, so I'll be looking forward to your suggestions down below. But uh, thank you guys for watching this episode. Please uh, leave a thumbs up and a comment too. If there's something you'd like to see, let me know in the comments uh, about uh, Scrap Mechanic being of interest. Uh, I usually do these kind of videos if you're new here, so uh, you can find Robocraft, you can find reassembly videos here on my channel, and then things like the Scrap Mechanic, and also the game Scraps, which is not too dissimilar from this one. So anyway guys, uh, thanks for joining me here, and uh, come back soon for some more Robocraft reassembly, Fallout 4, and possibly Scrap Mechanic. See you in the next one. Later!